That's it. That's it. That is sick, yoga. What the? Okay, let's go. I'm going to show you exactly how I got the opportunity to shoot for some of my favorite brands in the world. And I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look into a couple of the most valuable filmmaking, color grading and sound designing techniques that I've learned over the past eight years of shooting cars. Some of which might even surprise you a little bit. Try to think of the last time you sat in a fast car and when you felt a rush of adrenaline when the driver put his foot down. Now the little burst of excitement that you get whilst experiencing that is exactly what I try to simulate with these fast in-between close-up shots in my films. We actually captured these shots in a studio setting while the car was turned off completely. We're in a studio. Now it's crucial here to firmly grab the camera whilst you're recording the action and to then shake it a little bit as if you're kind of fighting the vibrations of the engine. Mm -hmm. I also asked a couple of guys to hold a couple of lamps in their hands and to shake them from left to right to simulate the sun flashing through the trees. This really sells the feeling of speed a bit more and kind of adds a little cherry on top. And you can not only apply this with gear shifts, for example, or driver pressing in the pedal, but you could also use it whilst filming the engine bay. Feels good, gets my senses tingling. Fuck, that's... Cringy. I do, however, also really like to mix these fast paced, hectic shots with some slow motion, steady counter movement. I personally like to use a studio space for this, but you can also simply shoot your subject outside at night in an open space where there aren't any light sources close by. Step two would be to use something like a tube light to paint light streaks over the body of your car by moving the tubes in a smoothly controlled motion. And it just creates some mystery so that instead of showing the entire car straight away, you can kind of build up that tension by slowly revealing more and more of the car. Als kunstenaar in smaak streef ik altijd naar perfectie. That's actually what we did for this shoot that I shot and that Zilfer Schmitz directed and edited for Audi Netherlands. He makes some awesome stuff also and we've done a ton of car shoots together. So definitely go check him out. Super nice guy, doing great things. Hi guys, it's Nicole. Another thing I really like to do to give myself a bit more room to play with in the edit is shoot a ton of insert shots. Further than you've ever done before until you dare to turn. This could be of surroundings flashing past, little cracks in the road, and I just shoot these in between my takes whilst I'm not filming the actual car. Something to make the, the edit a bit more dynamic and to give in to that feeling of, of speed. If you're at the beginning of your filmmaking journey, then you probably started out just like me by shooting all of your rolling shots whilst hanging out of the back of a car with your gimbal in your hand. And although I definitely wouldn't recommend shooting like this because it comes with some pretty obvious safety issues, it definitely gave me a good rush of adrenaline. But as I wanted to take my productions and my shots to a new level, I started to look for other solutions to kind of create the high quality feeling that these bigger car productions have with some more accessible tools. The solution I eventually found ended up being a product by Tilta called the Hydra Alien Car Mount. And you can simply mount that system to any car you like, to the front, to the sides, to the back. Yes, that's it, that's it. Nailed it, nailed it. And if you use that in combination with a DJI Ronin RS3 or RS2, you can even wirelessly control the camera movements by using an app or by using DJI's wireless controller. Like on this shoot, for example, where we secretly did a really early morning shoot in Monaco, we connected the Ronin to the DJI wireless controller. And then within a couple of minutes, we'd set up the entire rig and we could really easily control the movements of that gimbal. Now the police did end up stopping us, made us delete all of the footage, but I managed to make a backup of one of the cards. So here's some of the footage that we thankfully managed to save. Before I get into some of the other techniques that I use, like this low shutter effect, for example, or this macro filter effect, I thought I'd just rewind a couple of years to show you where my story started. This is me, about eight years ago, chasing after a supercar like a headless chicken. Every spare minute I had from the age of about 13, I'd spend running after expensive cars that me and my friends would spot on the street. Welcome to a new 
video. Together we would spend days competing on who could take the best photos with exactly the same gear. And from the outside, people thought we were completely crazy. But what most people didn't see was that we started to get in contact with some of the wealthy owners of these expensive cars. We would take photos of them and then send those to them via their Instagram. This eventually led to a couple of the owners reaching out, asking if I'd want to do a proper shoot for them in return for some money. And from that moment on, I was hooked. I couldn't believe I was doing my favorite thing in the whole world and that someone was actually willing to pay me for it. And at the beginning, my videos were absolutely terrible, but I started spending every spare minute I had after school, learning how to edit, studying what gear to use, studying camera movements, improving on my skills. So no, I didn't go to film school and all I had was my trusted Canon 760D with a 50 millimeter nifty 50 kit lens to practice with. After about three years of doing that consistently, whilst also posting those photos and videos to a dedicated Instagram account, I suddenly got an offer to film and edit an entire racing season for a Ferrari Challenge racing team. And around that time, I was actually still in school. So I had to literally sneak off early on Fridays so I could travel to the racing circuits and shoot the drivers, racing teams and cars on the weekends. However, one of the most important things that I did at those racing weekends, which a lot of people often seem to overlook, was that I did my best to connect with other creatives. Whenever I saw someone running around with a camera or even a phone, I'd go over to them and introduce myself and then we would connect on Instagram. By doing this, I not only made a ton of really good new friends who in turn really inspired me. We just got the shot. But I also started to build an entire network of like-minded creatives and well-established brands. And on one specific race weekend in Barcelona, under 36 degree scorching hot weather, I met a photographer from Paris. We kept in touch via Instagram. And then a couple of weeks later, he suddenly reached out to me asking if I wanted to shoot a super last minute video for one of his clients. And so we ended up putting everything we had into that one shoot was getting up to shoot at 5 a.m. for like five days in a row and working until midnight just so we could try and create the most epic film that we could possibly think of. Lundi. Oh, and after a couple of weeks of non-stop editing, I suddenly got another call. This time I was asked to direct and edit a launch film for the official opening of the biggest Ferrari dealership in Europe. The CEO of Ferrari was gonna be there and the executives, and there were gonna be a thousand people there that night to watch the film live for the first time, to basically launch the brand new Ferrari location, whilst also telling an authentic story. So the pressure was definitely on. We ended up being on set with about 10 to 15 people, filming about 16 million euros worth of of luxury Ferraris. This was literally what I'd been dreaming of since I was a little kid. So me and the team, we worked harder than ever before, shooting for five days straight, all gas, no breaks. It's four in the morning and we just finished one of the toughest shoots we have ever done. We are completely smashed. And sure, this specific production wasn't a worldwide TV commercial with a budget of over a million dollars and a team of a hundred plus people. But I'll explain a bit later in this video why exactly that actually turned out to be quite a good thing. Now, as you may know, I shoot pretty much all of my productions on the Sony FX3. Now, this camera doesn't only give me a ton of flexibility in post, but it also gives me a ton of flexibility on set because I can rig it to basically anything. I can put it on a car mount, I could put it on a Ronin, I could have it handheld, I could even mount it under the gas pedal of the car. And if I can combine that with the autofocus, then that's dream scenario. Another thing I love is that this camera goes up to 12,800 ISO, which makes it possible to get shots like this at night with very little light while shooting at an ISO of over 20,000. Another super important detail when you're filming cars is to always shoot using a polarizing filter. What that does is it cancels out some of the main reflections in a car, simply cleans up the lines and the curves of the car, which make it stand out a lot more. For this shoot, for example, because I wanted to shoot with a Promise filter, I made sure to get an ND filter and polarizer in one without having to stack three separate filters. I've created a dedicated page on my website where you can check out all of the specific gear I used for specific productions, all the way from mics to cameras to lenses to all that other good stuff. If the sound of your film doesn't feel authentic, it just simply, it takes the viewer out of the film. And this is something that I really struggled with at the beginning because there was simply not really anyone out there that was teaching these kinds of techniques. How do I record audio? How do I process that audio? You might have to keyframe audio to go from left to right. The sound from inside the engine bay, for example, sounds completely different to when you record the car's sound from next to the exhaust, for example. Thank you. 
And this is why on the Ferrari shoot, I hired a dedicated professional sound team to capture every single little detail of the five cars that we had to shoot. And what we've done is we've now created the essential automotive sound effects pack that you can use yourself, in which we've organized and then professionally mixed and mastered every single little detail of the five Ferraris that we recorded live whilst actually filming this production. All the way from the cars shifting gears, to the engine starting up and revving. To the car upshifting and downshifting. Flying past the microphone and way more. I've even added in some of my personal favorite whooshes, hits, risers, and other sound effects that I've developed over the years. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out. There's a link to my website in the description down below. And I have to give a massive thanks to the two guys that professionally recorded this and put their blood, sweat, and tears into this. They drove all the way to Paris with their bus filled with sound equipment, and they had a ton of different microphones on the inside of the cars, on the outside, on the front, in the engine bay, and they spent five days in a row together with us recording every single little detail of the five cars that we were filming. I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with some extremely gifted FPV pilots that simply took the productions to a whole new level. That is sick, young man. What the? They simply add a counter element to the fast high paced sequences where we cut a lot and they just give a bit more of a, an organic first person view of the car. Right. And from that side, I think it might be cooler if you do from the back. Like, All right. So when he comes back, I'll go from the back and I'll, and I'll get on him. Okay. And since I've had a few bad experiences over the years with flying drones myself, okay, no signal. I've uh, decided to leave that part to the professionals from now on. Got a little scratch here, I think. It's not in great shape, but you know, I think it's fine. Should be fine, yeah. That little burst of excitement that I talked about previously that you get when you're driving in a fast car eventually led me to incorporate these low shutter shots into my edits. You can do this by simply setting your camera to a shutter speed of about one fifth of a second. And then you simply move the camera up and down in a Z-like shape. And then in the edit, you speed up those clips by about three to 400% to give the film that little burst. That's what I personally like to do, but you should definitely experiment in your own ways and try to build on these ideas. I've literally spent years trying to figure out how I could make the colors and contrasts of the cars I captured really stand out. And that's where a platform called Motion VFX comes in, who are actually the sponsor of this video, which I'm super excited about. Motion VFX has a wide range of digital products that range from plugins to effects to titles to overlays and pretty much any other motion graphic that you can think of. And one of the plugins which I've used on pretty much every single car shoot in the last two to three years is called the M Movements plugin. With this plugin, which is available for both Final Cut Pro 10 and DaVinci Resolve, you can really easily create a ton of really creative digital camera movements. I especially use these to make some of my shots a bit more dynamic, but you can also use them to get really creative with your shots and add some more visual interests if the shot might have been a bit too static. Motion VFX also just launched a product called the Cine Studio Package. And one of the specific tools within that package that I actually like to use the most is called MRoto AI. Within seconds, I can motion track my subjects so that I can apply local color grades to certain parts of the images without having to manually keyframe this stuff for hours on end. And where this tool especially comes in handy is if you've forgotten to shoot with a polarizing filter. You can simply select the parts of the car that you would like to remove any unwanted reflections on and AI will track that part throughout your clip in a couple of seconds. Then you can darken that part, blur it, or add any other effect you would like. Which really closes the gap in Final Cut Pro for me. So yeah, if you're interested in that, there's a link down below to their website where you can check some of their products out. Plus you can use my discount code if you want to get a solid deal. If you're wondering why I'm sweating my face off and why I'm sitting in some kind of jungle in the middle of nowhere, you'll have to wait until the next video, because I've decided to make some pretty exciting changes to my life, but more on that very soon. Your heartbeat slows, you hear a ringing in your ears, and then you simply fall further than you've ever done before until you dare to turn. Instead of getting an entirely new macro lens, I simply found a way to achieve this effect by using a really cheap filter that I found on Amazon. 
With that specific filter, I could get really close to my subject whilst using a simple 24 to 105 millimeter Sony lens. And the edges of the frames actually got this really cool blur RGB effect. I then took this effect a step further on a production I recently did with a cinematographer called Jacques Crawford. This guy has a ton of really insightful videos, really knows what he's doing. So you should definitely go check him out if you haven't already. And what we did was we also made sure to capture some macro details of the body of the car. Like with these tail lights and carbon fiber details, for example, I simply screwed that macro Macro filter on the front and then moved the lens over the car in combination with one of those long tube lights, which felt quite cool. You might recognize yourself knowing exactly what you want to shoot and what story you want to tell, but just not knowing how to come up with interesting angles, shots and transitions that support that story in a really unique and interesting way. And one of the most important things I like to do to get these creative ideas flowing is to look at work from other creatives in my field. I personally actually really love looking at videos on Vimeo. I like to check out the profiles of the people that are involved in the productions of the videos that I watch so that I can check out their portfolio so that I can get to know other work that they've done. That way you quickly find a network of creative projects and also creative talented individuals and you aren't dependent on an algorithm serving you something that it thinks that you're most likely to click on. I've actually created another page on my website, which is completely free, on which I will upload three new pieces of content every week that really inspired me. And you can sign up to that for free in, in the link down below also. <laughs> a lot of links down below, I know. Over the past few years, I myself have actually started doing quite a few bigger productions after I signed with quite a big production agency here in Amsterdam. I haven't actually posted much at all about these productions online because I personally simply wasn't really that satisfied with the end result. It felt like the bigger the productions with 40 plus people running around on set and clients trying to strongly influence the creative direction of the project, the lesser I felt that creative spark to really create something that was true to me. I used to think that this million dollar commercial production approach was the only way that I could get to work with my favorite brands. But what I've noticed over the last couple of years firsthand, a story that used to take millions to produce, months of pre-production with a team of over 100 people five years ago, can now be realized with a small team of dedicated, passionate and talented creatives with a strong vision and focus. And that's exactly the kind of market that I want to keep tapping into, whilst having the creative freedom to explore ideas in my own way by doing what I love most in the entire world and whilst making a decent living from it also. So to summarize, as long as you give your absolute all to create the best possible work that you can possibly create and you simply keep putting one foot in front of the other without giving up whilst also diligently showcasing your work on social media, either by building a dedicated Instagram account or by showcasing it on YouTube or on your website. And if whilst you do that, you also make sure to connect to other creatives as much as possible. Why? Why? But why? Then I believe there's a very small chance that you won't eventually end up succeeding. With that said, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you in the next video. We'll see you in a bit and uh...